Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a nature lover, yoga practicing health nut like myself, then you're probably also quite choosy about the food in your fridge. In my case, about 90% of my food is what we call organic. So of course, when you go shopping in the grocery store, there'll be a variety of label claiming for non-GMO, pesticide, herbicide, free organic products. And they also claim to be natural. But where does this organic label really come from and what does it mean? And if you take it a step further, is it really better for the environment to consume organic products? So in my quest to answer these questions, I started doing some research. And let me talk a little bit about uh, organic farming to start. So organic farming is an alternative agricultural system that was in response to rapidly changing farming practices. So instead of using chemical fertilizers, um, the organic farmers use fertilizers of organic origins such as compost or manure. And since the 90s, the market for organic food has just exploded and reaching 63 billion worldwide in 2012. Um, this increase in demand for organic food also drove a rise in organic farming. And organic farming itself grew by 8.9% per annum. Okay, so now that all these numbers are out of, the, out of the way, let's talk about what exactly is organic farming. I think there isn't um, a very nuanced understanding of organic farming. Most people associate organic with sustainable, but it's not necessarily true. So there was a study in a magazine called Nature Plants, how fitting, um, that reviewed literature for the past 40 years on the relative performance between organic farming and conventional farming. So you can probably take a guess at the result. Yes, there are um, a lot of positive sides to organic farming, but surprisingly, organic farming also emits almost as much greenhouse gases as conventional farming. And there are uh, lots of barriers to growing this organic farming. So the way this research was set up is that there were four areas of sustainability criteria, let's call it. The first area is productivity. So a farm has to be productive to be sustainable. I think that makes sense. You have to actually produce yield product. And the second area is they looked at environmental impact. Uh, the third one would be economic. Uh, just like any farm or any business or an organic farm needs to be profitable, right, to, to be considered sustainable. And the fourth dimension was social sustainability. So now I'm going to be um, doing a bit of a fool's errand. I'll be describing a graph that you can try to picture in your head because we don't have the graph right now. And that basically talks about the result of this comparison. So imagine staring straight down at two beautiful flowers with petals. And um, each, different, uh, each flower has 12 petals. Each of these petals represent one, um, a sustainability indicator. So for example, it could be yield, it could be biodiversity, nutritional quality, uh, employment conditions of workers, and so on and so forth. And then the length of these petals would indicate how well um, the farming method is doing on each of these factors. So the longer the petal, the better. And then the ideal flower would be blooming in such a way that all the petals are equal so that you have balance among the indicators. And non-surprisingly, the organic farms had um, a more balanced flower, whereas the conventional um, flower was kind of discombobulated, if you can say that about a flower, and um, not balanced. 
So the reason is that conventional farming obviously would do better on indicators such as yield, production, you know, quantity, things that are important and that made traditional farming what it is today. But on the other hand, organic farming was overall more balanced on all the indicators. So they cared about things like the condition of work uh, of the workers. Um, maybe they're using humans instead of machines to do uh, certain things. Um, they also care about things like energy use and exposure to pesticides. So I hope uh, this graph gives you um, a good view to what um, orga why organic farming is better. I think in the end it comes down to our values as society. Do we value higher yield or do we value something more balanced? Uh, one word of caution is that even though uh, traditional farming may seem more cheap up front, or not cheap but um, more affordable, in the end there are lots of other costs associated. For example, if the pesticide goes into our water, we'll need to uh, treat the water and these are costs that are shared amongst each individual on this planet. So all food for thought. Thank you.